Welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to talk about the last math concept that I used to build IK rigs. Um, so this is a concept I found a, a while ago. It's called swing and twist and the idea is to break down your rotation into two components. One that swings something from, from one uh, direction to another and then when you are finally in the direction that you're supposed to be pointing at you start doing a twist rotation. So um, I found this article from Alan Chow that is pretty good and it has some nice images. You've probably seen this image before uh, if you if you read enough about Quintorians. And it, you know he goes through the, like a lot of the math concepts behind. It gives you some nice C-sharp code you can look at. Um, and a lot of, you know, like I said, a lot more math stuff that I don't understand the, the math behind it. So if you're a math person, go for it. Um, but we're going to go through this more as in vectors. Um, even though the source code kind of does it in in a vector kind of way, uh, not this way, that's slurp. Uh, there's, there's, there's vectors in the original code, but we're going we're gonna to step through it like kind of like that. So I found it to be one of the most important pieces of building IK rigs, the second version of it. Uh, it actually makes it easier to implement in all honesty and, and it makes it smooth and, and it worked out for a lot of parts because I was using something different for limbs and I was trying something to, something completely different with um, with the spine and the spine just never worked right so second version I, I was trying to figure out ways to smooth and trying to get, get spine to work and at some point I decided you know let me try swing and twist and I created my own way of implementing it and it seemed to work really well with um, moving the spine in an IK fashion. And I did not start applying it to the limbs. So this way now, my whole IK system actually does things based on swing and twist. So we're going to go step through some basic, the basic concepts behind how to, how to apply this. And like we're going to visually see each step of, of the way. So we're going to start off where we have our object A and object B. And object A is going to do its own rotation, and we're going to compute a swing and twist of rotations that then can be applied to B. So they're both equal. Uh, yellow is pointing up. Green is pointing forward. It's pretty easy to tell uh, the way I color the cubes. Red means forward. Blue means uh, left. And green means back. So very easy to tell how these things are done. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a simple rotation to A. We're going to rotate it by 9 on the X axis, uh, on the Y axis, sorry. It, it by default does Y, the way I wrote this API. And then we're going, to, we're going to twist it. So we're going to rotate it and then we're going to add another rotation that becomes our twist value. So if I refresh, probably then save, refresh. There you go. So now our up direction is now pointing forward because we twisted it on the Z axis. And then now it's pointing this way. All right. So. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is that we need to tr transform our current rotations into directions. So in this case, we're going to take our rotation of A and we're going to transform the forward direction. So this way we know which direction we're actually, where the forward actually is. So in, in forward A, the direction will be transformed to where the green is. So that's, that's our transformation right there. And B, we transform forward with our rotation of B, which is this green, which is, has no rotation at all. So forward being, is being transformed back to forward because there's actually no rotation being applied. So next thing we do is that we take these two directions and we create a swing rotation. And all it is is just a unit vector um, thing. It's actually pretty, it's a really simple function and I think most APIs will have it, but we'll, we'll look at through it. So the idea is we have this direction and we have this direction. So we want to be able to swing this forward into this forward direction. 
Now, the way it, it actually happens, we'll look at the code, but the concept behind unit vector, um, and if every function has like a different um, name, uh, sometimes a quartorian function might say from unit vectors or from two, two directions or whatever. Um, the idea is like you take this direction, you take the, the B direction, then you need to find the axis of rotation. So the easiest solution for to find an axis of rotation between two, um, two vectors is to do a cross uh, product. So once you have a cross product, it will create uh, an orthogonal dir direction of it. And in this case, the, uh, um, the, the, rotation, the, the rotation axis is basically the up direction. So if, if, if you cross apply left with forward, you're going to get this kind of world space up. So that will be our actual first rotation. That will be our swing. So we're swinging from one to the other. Uh, if we want to go look at that function, we can go to Quantorians and let's see, what's it, unit fix. So if I go unit fix. Uh, So it's doing a, a couple other things. It's uh, doing some checks, but again, like I said, it does a cross apply and it does other things to make sure you get it right, depending on different things. But the basic idea is a cross apply. Uh, if it's like the exact op, uh, if it's the, if the directions are basically the same, um, then there's no rotation required. Um, if this value here is that if they're exactly the exact opposites, uh, this is how you handle a uh, unit vector rotation if they're like the exact opposites. Um, and then this is the just general. And like I said, it's a cross product and then that's it. And then you kind of got to get that little, um, like you, you have the axis of rotation and then the dot product plus one becomes the Quintorian um, like uh, degrees of rotation. So that's that's really it. So, so, so it's the axis of rotation and the degrees of rotation. All right, so I don't need to do that. So if I do that, now if I, let's say, I take B's rotation and then I apply the swing rotation to it, uh, this should now be pointing in the same direction. And ta-da, it points in the same direction. So that's basically the basic idea of swing. So that's it. So now we swing, like I said, just finding that, uh, that axis of rotation between two angles, uh, but between two vectors. Now, now when something is now officially swung in the right direction, now the twist value is, is a, it's, it's a similar kind of idea. Like you have to have an axis of rotation. So the axis of rotation is the final direction that you wanted it to be. So let's say like, for the, like in the case of IK, of IK, I'm gonna have a direction vector. So my this is my uh, my this direction is my IK direction. I want my bone to be pointing in that direction. So now my bone is pointing in that direction because by just applying that swing by calculating that swing. But now we want my bone to twist a little bit. This one you see it's been twisted where the yellow, the up direction of the original bone has got got rotated by 90 degrees, and here it hasn't done yet. So once it's swung into the right direction that we want we can actually take that axis direction, that direction as an axis of rotation. Um, so like where before we had to compute the axis that we want to rotate by, by doing a cross product, we already know our axis rotation. Now, the only difference we need to do is we need to find out what is the angle between this yellow direction and this yellow direction, since they're both on the exact same axis. So for step two, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to transform everything into vectors. We're going to transform everything back into that, those yellow lines. And then we're just going to compute the angle between the two vectors. That's it. That's all we really need. Um, and here I put a limit because let's say, let's say if it's in this case, it's 0 0.01 um, degrees. So if it like, if it's a really tiny degree difference between the two, um, then it, there's no angle of rotation that really needs to be done. It's, if it's so minute, I don't want to bother to actually do a twist rotation. Uh, <clears throat> if we do a twist rotation, 
we need to uh, do a couple of things. Like we need to do one thing first because when we get the angle between the two, it, it it's we don't know if it's positive or negative. So we need to test for positive or negative. So to test for positive or negative, we're going to take the up direction from our uh, our first item, the the one we're trying to, to move, and then we compare it to the cross. Well. Well, idea is that we want to figure out the left direction. Um, <clears throat> so how do I? I should really prepare for this. <laughs> I did. I'm just swinging by this. I've been so busy this week. Um, well, we need to find out a direction. We're going to use the dot product to figure out how to determine if something's positive or negative. So we have the four direction of a and the up direction of A. So that's our forward direction of A and that's our up direction of A. Uh, let's see, so I have left A. So left A with up B. So here's up B, right? So I have, uh, so the left, A, so, all right, now, now I'm seeing what I'm doing. So left A, so what I'm actually computing is this red line. So I'm computing this red line right here. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, to compute that left, I say left. <clears throat> All right. So so what that's what I'm doing. A cross product. I create I create that that um, this red line. So now I'm going to figure out how if it's in a positive or in a negative side. So they're both pointing the same direction. So if I do a dot product, um, f like from here to here, everything is, everything in this part on this side, let's say if we do this like as a circle, everything on this top half is going to be positive. Everything in this bottom half is going to be negative. So since we know our up and our forward, we use this left direction as our way to determine if something is in the upper hemisphere or in the lower hem hemisphere. Uh, when we're dealing with the up direction, because the up direction is we determine as our twist value, and our forward direction is going to determine our swing value. These are arbitrary. It depends on what you really need. But in the case for uh, depending on your IK system, sometimes it's forward is going to be your forward. Sometimes it's up is going to be your forward because bones can point in two different directions depending on your point of view. But in this situation, like I said, we're that's what we're going to do. So. When we compare the dot product between these two vectors, it's going to create a value like zero, uh, or actually no, uh, it's going to create a value of one. It's going to be in a positive direction. Um, so if so, if the dot product is less than zero, then we want to turn our angle to a negative because it's going to be in a negative direction. Like I said, if the if the the yellow line was actually like in a downward direction, and we did a cross product, it would be below this the the yellow A. So if yellow B was below the yellow A, like in down in this direction, it would be a negative. So that's so we have to. So when we do the twist, we have to determine: are we going positive or negative? I'm sorry, I totally forgot. Like I said, I'm, I'm winging this by looking at the code uh, that I did like a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, so once you know your axis the axis of rotation, which is going to be forward A. Like I said, that's going to be our main IK direction. And now that we know our angle, we compute a twist value. And the twist value is just an axis angle rotation. And then all we have to do is apply it. And then the green, uh, though the yellow, should match up with the other yellow. And there you go. And that's swing and twist. Um, and like I said, this really helped out with uh, improving my IK system. I like uh, if it wasn't for this article, I would never have the thought of swing and twist. Um, so it, I just got lucky that I remembered, and I was so desperate. I, let me try different concepts to try to get things to sm smooth out, and this really helps. This really actually helped uh, improve my IK system. So, um, so yeah, that's that's the swing and twist. And like I said, I was doing very simple. Just 90 degrees of rotation on the Y and 90 on, on Z. Uh, if I do something like more wacky with positive and negatives, and there's three rotations instead of just one, uh, two, uh, if I read this, 
there you go. So I do some crazy rotation and it re it gets recomputed just right um, for B. Like I said, I f just figure out how to swing f the two forward directions from one to the other and then just compute the twist rotation and just make sure that you're going in the right po uh, negative or positive dire um, angle direction. And when we're we dealing with this with IK, with that's what we can do. We can save the angle the, the direction that we want our, our bones to point and then just how much angle uh, twisting do we need to do. So if we just save those two values, um, that can actually compute like an entire arm. Like an arm can have like two or three different rotations. Um, if you like if you two bone arm, uh, one, two, yeah, about two rotations. Uh, if I have like an IK uh, for like the three-legged bone character, uh, there's three rotations. Um, so if you so if you use this like IK information where you just have you say okay point in this direction and when you're done swinging in that direction just do a twist you can then compute a lot of different um, IK things um, with different algorithms which just with just that basic information so if you're gonna do let's say like in the next video we're gonna start doing the IK rigs this so this is the end and we're gonna really start getting the the good stuff. Um, when you're doing like legs and, and heads and everything else, this swing and twist really actually makes things a lot smoother, especially since it's the same data type. Um, we can then start applying it to everything. Um, so it like look IK, um, uh, limb IK. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of like different IK algorithms you can use to really um, to improve. And it's not that hard to compute, especially when you're doing everything in vectors. So that's it uh 16 minutes good i wanted this to be short um i hope you enjoyed it um hope you learned i'm sorry for the little brain fart in the middle when i was trying to figure out how twist works i'm sorry um no i am we, we're all living in an apocalypse at the moment so excuse me to <coughs> do whatever um so yeah i uh, hope you like it the next video we're definitely going to start doing the ik rigs uh that one i don't know how long it'll take me to set up i'm going to break it down into separate pieces and we're doing one super long video i'm probably going to break the ik rigs down into separate pieces where the next piece the first piece i'm going to really concentrate on is just the, the the basic concept of the data and then how to just do the hips uh and the hips basically is the concept from this video, which is about swing and twist. And the previous video was about the um, alternate direction, um, or the inverse directions of quintorians. So this video and the previous video, uh, you really should really watch and understand because without those two videos, you might get lost completely with IK, um, the IK rig system with the next couple of videos. So I'm kind of thinking just do hips, um, maybe do legs and then do feet separately and then deal with the spine, deal with the head, and then we're done because arms and legs are identical and that's it. And then we'll get to see the fun uh, progress at the very end. So um, please like, uh, but definitely subscribe. I'm, I, want, I need more subscribers than I do need likes, but I guess I need likes to get subscribers or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, if you enjoy it, please, and just enjoy it um keep your hands safe or clean whatever and please be safe wear your masks i'm waiting for my mask it'll be here in about two two weeks apparently it's shipping from china <laughs> i thought i ordered it and it's in america but apparently it's coming from china so i gotta i want to i need i really want to wear masks when i go out for food shopping every week so and everyone should and cdc says we should so please keep yourself safe i want you all to be able to build all your fancy stuff and not be ill or killed by a little buggy. All right. See you guys in the next video. And I'll, we're going to have fun with IK next.